So IB results are coming out soon. How exactly do you avoid that stress and how do you make the best use of this situation? Hi everybody, my name is Joaquin Ravello. I'm a current UPenn Ward and dual degree engineering student and I studied and got a perfect 45 in the IB back in May, 2021 with the exam route. All right, I'm making this video to address the following question that I keep getting. How do I deal with IB results stress, with IB exams, now that we're getting, now that they're out of the way and we're getting our results, how do I deal with the stress that comes with unveiling those number or those results right there? All right, and this is my answer to that, and it's pretty straightforward, and there's a few layers to this, but at the surface, it's pretty straightforward. What I actually want you to do is to not care. All right, that might seem counterintuitive. That might, you might be like, but don't these exams matter? Aren't these results important? Yeah, they are. But guess what? You can't control that anymore. Okay, there's nothing. And I want you to think of it this way. There's absolutely nothing you can do at all to change those results. As of right now, you've already done the exams, you've already gone through that process. So there's nothing you can do to change it. I'm gonna say that again, for the people in the back, there's nothing you can do to change that. And that might tear some people down. But I don't want to I, I, don't, I don't want that to be you. I want that to build you up. So that you can develop that inner strength to understand that, hey, it's out of my control. And that's okay. It's okay that it's out of my control. It's okay that there's nothing I can do with it. And then with that, you can genuinely not care. All right, this comes down to the following set of philosophies, which is known as stoicism, right, which was developed by it was developed. So it was a derivative of the cynics in ancient Greece, who genuinely didn't care, they broke all forms of social constructs, to essentially do what they wanted. So they were practicing do not care to a rather extreme. Now stoicism comes along. Long story short, the person who was most influential, at least to me was the works of Epictetus, and then the later works of Marcus Aurelius, who was actually he wrote the meditations he was he a lot of his philosophies come from the work of Epictetus. And Epictetus brought up a very interesting point that I think needs to be relearned in today's modern world. Is that essentially, Control the controllable and forget everything else. And the majority of things you can control include yourself, include your mind. And most importantly, it doesn't matter what happens, but what matters is the way you react to that. And you can always react to it with a sense of positive joy, with a sense of sadness, with a sense of despair, whatever emotion you react to. Understand that the initial emotion you might not control, but the following emotion that is your reaction is completely up to your control. And with that in mind, you can really go through any challenges in life and just react to it, not necessarily from sadness or anger or even happiness, but from a place of growth, from a place of personal growth on the inside. All right, and that's literally how the obstacle becomes the way to quote daily, the, the Daily Stoic, Ryan Holiday, the obstacle becomes the way. So the challenges in your modern day become the way forward, become the path you must follow to become the best version of yourself, which I believe is fundamentally true. So we take that back to the IB results, you can not control it. So don't care. Okay, genuinely don't care. And if something good happens to you, that's good. Grow. If something bad happens to you, that's good. Grow, look back and understand how you could have done better. Look back and understand what lessons you could have learned. Grow, 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 right? I like to say that there's no good or bad experiences. There's only growth experiences, there's only opportunities for which to grow. And understand that when you really don't care in this specific situation, and you take a step back and you can realize that, hey, the way I react to that is completely in my control. All right. A six to someone can be very good. It can also be very bad for someone who wants to get a seven. So notice how it's the exact same result, but the way you react is completely different. Therefore, your reactions are independent of the result that follows. So keeping that in mind allows you to really take a step back, breathe, relax, and move forward. All right, now let me give you an actual logical reason as to why a more logical reason per se as to why you shouldn't really care. And it's this, the IB results really don't matter. Okay, for 90% of people, for 90 to 95% of people, I would argue that your IB exam results genuinely do not matter. Unless you're of the small minority who are literally on the brink of their university denial, which is again, a small minority, this doesn't happen to everyone. Or if you're a small minority of the people who need to get an exact score, maybe if you're going to Cambridge or Oxford, you need to get like an exact 44 and an exact 45, again, which is basically just a derivative of the first one where you're basically on the brink right there, then it does matter. But to everyone else, it literally does not matter. 
All right. No one goes when they're 55 and they look back at their IB results when they're 17 and they're like, damn, I wish I could have done better in my IB language and literature SL course. All right. Nobody thinks that. Okay, you move on with life, you realize that there are other more important things in life than just a number that you get in the IB. All right, and that's coming from myself that I got a 45. There are definitely more important things in life than sign yourself to a number just like that. Okay, so understand it generally doesn't matter. Plus, the majority of the scores you get isn't going to change at all your university admission results. And let me tell you this, once you get into your top university, you're going to forget about what courses you took in the IB anyways. All right, if I didn't get a 45, I probably wouldn't even be able to tell you what HLs and SLs did. Generally, because I just don't care. Now, I, of course, I, I remember it because I help students and they're, they always question me and wondering about it. But if I didn't get that, I generally wouldn't care because it doesn't, it's not something that comes up in the world, right? When I'm, even when I'm applying to a job or I'm going to internships or start my own business, whatever the case may be, no one comes up to me and asks me, oh, what IB results did you get, All right? Or what did you do in high school with regards to your grades? That basically never happens, all right? Why? Because... <laughs> And I hate to break this, but getting good in the IB is not necessarily a direct correlator to success in the workplace. There are multiple other factors that contribute to your competence. And your IB score is not necessarily one of those. So breathe literally half for more than half for 95, 90 to 95% of people does not matter. Really just does not matter. I'll say that again. It really does not matter. Whatever score you get right now, you're, you might maybe feel sad, but again, you're in control of that. So if you feel sad, that is 100% your fault. You can see the results, choose to just be happy, choose to move on with your life, choose to meditate, choose to just have that mindfulness, move on. And then when you get into university, you're probably gonna forget about it. it doesn't really come up after that. It's not a really important part of your life. All right. However, with that being said, the IB is still important in the admission process. So if you have not received your, or if you haven't done the IB exams yet, if you're maybe of November or May of next year, whatever the case may be, and you haven't done them yet, of course, be on top of that. But the main point here that I want to make is to control the controllable and forget everything else, right? Truly forget the things that you can't control. All right. Now, <clears throat> there's a few things I want to mention with that. And this comes back to the all important concept of taking time to recover. Right. As I talk about in all my videos, there's really two parts to reaching insane levels of personal productivity, to reach extraordinary levels and become an elite ultra high achiever. All right. There's two parts to the efficiency aspect. Right. And I like to say this in all my videos that productivity has less to do with how efficiently you do something and more you and more to do with what you choose to do with your time. Because there you get to access disproportionate leverage. I digress. I'll talk about that in another video. The efficiency aspect, there's really two important parts, all right? There's sprinting, there's recovering, sprinting, recovery. Now, sprinting is when you sit down, you do focus work for a prolonged period of time, you just get as much done as you possibly can in a state of flow. That's sprinting. Recovering is when you take a step back, right? You allow your brain to not do work, to wander, to take a break, whatever you want to call it, you recover, you take a step back. Now, if I'm always sprinting and, and I'm never recovering, I won't be able to sprint for long. And if I'm always recovering and never sprinting, I don't get anything done. So you need both in the right proportions in order to become successful. What I want you to remember where I'm going with this essentially is that right now you're in a recovery stage, all right? You just finished the IB, you're getting your results. You just like you're, you're in a recovery state. All right. In order to make the best use of your recovery state, you want to <clears throat> allow your brain to not only take a step back, but also to avoid what I like to call sensory overload which is taking in too much information because that causes the, a lot of the energy that, or so much of the stress of everyday life. And most, this is what I find for most students. They finish an exam and then they go on social media for hours. They play tons and tons of video games and they burn themselves out again, right? Most people after summer, they just feel burned. They feel tired because they're just constantly filling their time with so much stress and noise and movement per se. All right. And this actually happens more than you think. So instead of that happening to you right now, especially leading up to the exams or the exam results, you can get a lot of stress just in the exams itself, which just builds up this stress, this tension, and then you burn that off and you just become more tired in the process. Rather than making that a victim, rather than you becoming a victim of that, I strongly suggest you doing the following, okay? Now that you're in recovery stage, avoid filling the recovery stage with constant stimulus, meaning constant forms, in many cases, videos, social media, constant forms of, I don't want to say distractions because they're not really like social media. I don't sure it's a distraction, but if you use it for fun, is it really a distraction? Not really constant form of influx of information. 
right? Because if you think about it, a picture's worth a thousand words, a movie's worth a thousand pictures. So if you're watching multiple movies, which is what you do on TikTok, you're just getting tons of information. Take a step back from that. All right. And this is going to 100% help with dealing with any IB results anxiety that you have. Take a step back. And this is what I want you to do. This is the action point. Schedule time to do nothing. Like, I mean, it. schedule time to do absolutely nothing. And it can be something simple, like 10 minutes, just look outside or 10 minutes, go for a walk with your dog or 10 minutes, go to the forest and just walk in circles or 10 minutes, walk around your block or 10 minutes, just listen to music, right? Like how often do you find yourself just sitting down and listening to music? Basically never happens. We're always using music as a filler, right? For constant, as a constant form of entertainment rather than actually sitting down and actually enjoying said music. All right. So the point I'm trying to make here, don't fill that time with constant stimulus. It's going to add more stress and find the time to do absolutely nothing. All right. Even, even pop achievers do this, right? If you look at Bill Gates, when he finishes his, I believe his second quarter, he does this twice a year. He goes into the middle of the forest and does nothing. Just reads books, does nothing. All right. Give yourself that opportunity. You're going to feel much happier. You're going to feel much more refreshed at the end of this recovery as well. This isn't to say that you shouldn't play video games. I used to play video games all the time. I don't anymore, but I used to play video games all the time. It's fun. It's entertaining, whatever. But the constant overflow of that can lead to more stress. And then that stress pours in to, let's say, your IB results anxiety and into other parts of your life. So take a step back to do nothing. Again, by all means, play video games. I used to love playing video games. But when you play all those video games, maybe taking 10 to 15 minutes per day, just do nothing, relax, calm down. is one of the best things you can do with not only with regards to any stress, but also to your mental health as a whole. All right. Hope this helped. Keep doing this. And to everyone who's waiting for the IB results to come out, I wish you the best of luck. Remember that there's absolutely nothing you can do right now. So worrying about this is only going to have negative impacts on your life for no reason at all. All right. And maybe there's people who like inflicting pain onto themselves like that. I wouldn't want that. So I suggest taking a step back, doing nothing, and then ultimately being able to recover best. All right. Thanks for, thanks for watching this video. If you have, and podcast, if you're on podcast. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below or shoot me an email at joaquinr at warden.upenn.edu. I read all my emails and I'm more than happy to help if you have any questions. All right, have a good rest of your day. We'll talk soon. Stay productive. Goodbye.